Bless the name of the Lord. Thanks to God be the glory. We give God all glory, honor, and praise this evening. We thank God for yet another time that we can gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ. Before we get started tonight, amen, I want to say something to, to the church, amen, to the people of God's choice church. You know, I was at work today and I had a little, little quiet time, amen, and in my quiet time, I began to just Think about different things, the ministry, what God has done, where he's taken us to, so on and so forth. And and God began to press up on my heart. I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking for a pastor. I'm not speaking for anybody else. But um, he was simply telling me that you can do more. Amen. And at first, you know, I, just, I kind of probably gave God that look, you know. But, but, you know, when God says something, he's just telling the truth. Amen. He began to just show me other things about how we can, uh, or how I could do, do more. So, um, I just want to let Poxy know, amen, that, that I thank God for, for his, um, his intervention. I, I'll put it like that, that he's still instructing and he's still guiding and, and that, um, I am up to the challenge of, of doing more in Christ Jesus. Amen. Um, uh, uh, there's so much more to learn, so much more to do, so much more to go forward in. And and so we take on that 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 responsibility with that accountability to to do just that in the name of of Jesus. Amen. And, and with that being said, amen, first lady didn't know I was going to do this. Amen. But like I said, I, I didn't have a quiet time on well, next week, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday for those of you who 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 are able and who would like to share on this responsibility. Amen. I'm going on a three day fast. Amen. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. For those who go with me, it's from 6 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. at night. Amen. <clears throat> you can have water. Amen. Glory. Tell somebody said you can have water. water. Amen. I didn't say juice. Amen. I said water. Amen. From 6 in the a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm going to do that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. There, there are some things that we want from God, some things we want God to execute, some things that we want to go forward in. And, 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 and those things God is more than willing to do, but tell somebody there's something we got to do. Amen. Amen. We want to see the, the movement of God. Amen. And, and that movement comes by obedience. And part of the obedience is uh, fasting. Amen. You'll find it in the Bible. Fasting is, is in the Bible. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week, uh, a three-day fast. Amen. For those of you who have to take um, your um, medicine, I understand that you got to put a little something on your stomach, but that don't mean you get to eat a full meal. Glory, have mercy. Uh, you just want something on your stomach to keep you from from being nauseated and so on and so forth. So, so um, how, how can I say it? Do it. <laughs> do it mindfully in the spirit of God, and and do it according to what God gives you. Amen. Uh, um, don't go eat a a five course breakfast. Amen. Five eggs, four pieces of bacon, three sausages, and glory how mercy they didn't want to go on the fast. No, just uh, take your medicine, take a little food with your medicine, and 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 go on the fast. Amen. 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 All right. Well, Pox, that's all I got on on that tonight. Tonight we're still in we're still in the book of Matthew, and tonight we're in the twenty second chapter of Matthew, and in this twenty second chapter of Matthew, remember we are looking at the things that. Jesus said as far as uh, volume wise, amen. And, and so even in this 22nd chapter, uh, he got some things that were, they weren't volume, but but being that they're in this 22nd chapter, we, we'll try to uh, uh, just try to get them to, amen. But nevertheless, um, the volume of what Jesus said in the 22nd chapter of Matthew starts in the very beginning. We're just going to do the 22nd chapter of Matthew tonight because in chapter 23, there are 39 verses and Jesus talks from verse 2 to verse 39. Wow. Amen. Glory to him. There, there are no breaks. There are no he said and he said it to them. No, it's from verse 2 through 39. So tonight uh, we're just going to get the volume what he said in, in uh, chapter 22 and, and maybe a little bit of 
of here and there that he said also in verse 20 uh, in chapter 22 <clears throat> in verse 21 amen <clears throat> we left off with jesus simply telling them hey i'm the chief cornerstone amen people have missed this because of whatsoever reason but but i'm the cornerstone by which the church is built i'm the cornerstone on which the word of god is, is built because i am that cornerstone amen and and so in in chapters 21 jesus not only addressed a corrupt leadership amen but he also gave that leadership a chance to repent and still uh, accept salvation amen so there are times when jesus will chastise you but at the same time tell somebody he's always giving an invitation amen <clears throat> also in ver in chapter 21 we we had the the parable jesus spoke in parables he used the parable of, of two sons one that said he would do it and and one his father asked him to go to work and he said that he would uh he wouldn't but then he repented and he went anyway and he had one that said he would and he didn't but that was one of the parables and jesus also talked about the parable of the of um, a certain household amen and so in verse 20 in chapter 22 jesus continues to talk to them in parables and in chapter 22, verse 1, it begins like this. It said, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, invited to the wedding. And they would not come. Mm. Glory, have mercy. So here it is. He he he, he giving them a parable of what the kingdom of, uh, of heaven is like. He says, like a king, amen. And and he's getting ready to throw a marriage feast for his his son. He's throwing a marriage for his son. Now, a marriage back then is no different than a marriage today. Tell somebody it's the social cornerstone, amen. Where people get to you know, glory, do their vows, but they also get to to make a big scene. I mean, so tell somebody say it's a big event. And so it was here. The king was throwing a big event for his son uh, who's going to get married. <clears throat> and it said, and, and, and in verse three, and sent forth his servants to call them that were biting to the bidden to the wedding and they would not come. In other words, he sent his servants out to, hey, come on, uh, 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 the king's son getting married today. Y'all, come on, come on, come on to the marriage. Come on to the marriage. Come on to the marriage. It's a feast. Everything. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen. But. The Bible says in verse three, they would not come. Amen. For whatever reason, they would not come. So in verse four, it says, uh, in, in verse four, it says that he does it again. Somebody say he sends out the, the uh, servants again. Amen. It says again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden, uh, invited. Behold, I have prepared my dinner my oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things are ready come unto the marriage in verse five say but they made light of it and went their ways one to his form another to his merchandise and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them amen so he sends out another uh servant amen uh, he sent out another set of servants to say hey come on uh come on to the, the wedding feast um in the marriage feast he he said look he said everything has already been prepared in other words you don't have to do anything but come oh yes, so everything else has already been prepared it said he prepared the dinner he had uh, uh oxen and fatlings were killed fatlings were uh, uh um somebody say the, the fatted animal amen uh in 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 the uh greek text amen uh um, the word fatland means corn fed glory have mercy amen in other words tell somebody say it, it whatever the meat was whether it was a sheep or cow whatever tell somebody it was prime for this event and and it was made ready and the only thing they had to do was come but in verse five it said that they they made light of it they 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 pushed it off like i ah, ain't no big thing and they they went on their ways doing whatever they need to do went to the farm with the hand of their merchandise amen and and it said a remnant those that were left took the servants and and it treated them spitefully and even slew them mm. glory hammers now now the only thing they did was invited you to the wedding. 
the wedding, to the marriage feast, to the wedding. Amen. And, and so you act like that. Glory. Hammers. We'll, we'll come back to that because in verse number seven, it said, but when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were biting, those that were invited were not worthy. Oh, glory, have mercy, amen. It says, so in verse five, so those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with gifts. All right, glory, have mercy. So now uh, the word, somebody said the word got back to the king. Amen. Uh, how you have treated his servants who came just to bid you to the wedding feast, to the marriage. Amen. And, and so it said at this time, the king got mad. He got upset. And so he sent his armies uh, 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 to pass judgment, glory, have mercy, on those who had committed these things. Amen. Uh, uh, he probably would have been all right until they what? Did the killing. Amen. Because it says in verse number seven, but when the king heard thereof, he was wrought, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. Yeah, glory, have mercy. Amen. And, and burnt up the city. So, so here he is. The, the king is mad. He sent his armies. He's going to uh, pass judgment on what has already happened in the city. Amen. He he kills those that have done the, the murders and, and he has just, uh, somebody say, put the city on fire. He, he, he burned the city. Now, after he's done that, amen, glory be to God, in verse number eight, he said, then said he to his servants, um, the wedding is ready. Everything's still ready. The feast is still, what, going to go on. Amen. He said, so go and find, be it to the marriage, uh, uh, everybody. He said, go to the highways and gather together all as many as they found both good and bad and the wedding was furnished with guests all right so the first group amen didn't want to do right so the king you look he said hey y'all did wrong so i'm gonna pass my judgment and then i'm still going to invite what others to the feast to the marriage to the wedding ceremony and so now he said that they gathered those that were found both good and bad so he invited everybody Glory, Hammer. He didn't leave anybody out on on this third invitation, Amen. And so it says that in verse number eleven, after the guests are are are, are, are set, everybody is ready. It said, and when the king came to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, Amen. Glory. In verse twelve, it said, and he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing, uh, uh, gnashing of teeth for many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Amen. So now uh, uh, that the king has walked in and he's looking at the guests and he's he's checking the guests out. And, and all of a sudden this, this one man stands out. And the question is, why does he stand now? Or uh, somebody say, because he didn't look like he was supposed to be at the wedding. Mm. In other words, amen. Even today, yeah. when we go to a wedding, we dress in a certain way. Yeah. We dress in a certain manner. Amen. Because that is being what? Respectable to those that are getting married. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently back in the day, if they invited you to the wedding, to the feast, to the marriage, and and you did not have the proper attire. It's, somebody says it's like going to one of those fancy restaurants, amen. You know, the ones where you show up and they say, well, you don't have a, a, a jacket you can't get in. Yeah. And so what do they do? They supply you the jacket to put on so you can come and look like everybody else in the restaurant. Somebody say, so it was at the at the marriage feast, so it was at the wedding, amen. But but this one particular person stood out because they did not have on the right a tie, the right apparel, the oh, glory, have mercy, amen, glory, have mercy. And so since he did not have on the right garments, amen, the, the king gives uh, uh, the commandment to what? To, to, to take him out. He First, he asks him why, uh, why wasn't he dressed 
accordingly. Amen. It said, he said in verse number 12, friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Amen. Not only did he not have on the proper attire, but tell somebody say he was speechless. Didn't have anything to say. Glory. I mean, tell somebody sometimes we don't have anything to say because we know we wrong. wrong. Amen. Mm -hmm. We we we've missed the mark. But but nevertheless, it said, then said the king in verse 13. Um, then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. That should be um, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. For uh, many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. I tell somebody, I say, many were called to the marriage feast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, glory, have mercy. But in this case, uh, 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 only, you know, certain one were what? Chosen to stay. This man, he was called to the feast. But he just because he he came. Oh Lord, let let let, 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 let let me go back through this so that we can understand what it means to us in the gospel uh, in today's uh, gospel. Amen. I mean, first of all, uh, he said that heaven is like this here: a king having a marriage. Amen. For his his son having a wedding for his son. Tell somebody say, King God, glory have mercy, is having a wedding a wedding feast for his son Jesus Christ. And he has invited everybody. Oh Amen. God. Go ahead. Tell somebody, say, say he's already did the preparations. Yes. Amen. Uh, you, you don't have to do anything yes. but come. Yes. Amen. Matter of fact, even before you get to get, even before you get in the wedding, the wedding feast, um, he'll have the proper attire for you to dress yes. in. Uh, he's not going to allow you to come to the wedding anytime else. Yes. Glory, have mercy. But there are some of us, glory, have mercy, uh, such as in verse number five, that will make light of it. it it's no big thing. Uh, you have people every day that are not going to accept the invitation that God has given through his son, Jesus Christ, to enter into the kingdom uh, some folk gonna brush it off they're gonna go on back to work they're gonna go on back to their their, their nice houses they're gonna go on back to to the things that they usually do because it's no big deal, no big deal. that i've turned down salvation uh-oh, glory, have mercy. Uh, some are even going to be like verse number six. Uh, some are even going to uh, maim, hurt, kill the messengers that are inviting uh, uh, people what? To the feast. Oh, God, help us. That are inviting oh. folks what? To the wedding. That are inviting folks to salvation. salvation. Amen. Uh, tell somebody, say, it happened in the biblical times, and it's still going to happen. Today, glory, have mercy, amen. And and then uh, the king will come, amen, glory, and, and he will execute, uh, glory, have mercy, his 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 judgment, amen. Now, now the part that I see about this is that folks think judgment is only going to come when they die. Oh, tell somebody, I said there is a judgment when you die. But there is also will be a judgment on this side. Amen. Uh, some just, just I put it like this. Some folk going to get judged twice. Amen. Mm -hmm. Especially when you are doing the carriers of the gospel. Uh, somebody say when you want to do wrong to them, when you want to maim them and hurt them and, and kill them simply, simply because they are bringing the word of God. Oh, watch this. Amen. Uh, uh, some folk kill you by their mouths. Uh oh, oh, glory. I hope folk got that there. Watch what you say about a carrier of the word. Okay, amen. I'm I'm just trying to give y'all an overview of what, of what he's saying here. Oh, this all preachable uh, 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 context. Hey, glory, have mercy, amen. But he goes on. He said, "Okay." He said, "Now, after God has uh, the king has even committed uh, 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 carried out his judgment, uh, somebody say he still won't folk what to come to the marriage feast. So he's still going to send out what." The invitation. He's still going to have servants from the east, the west, the north, the south, the southeast, the southwest, the northwest, the northeast. Oh, tell somebody, say the invitation is still going to go out to everybody. 
Matter of fact, the Bible said Jesus won't come until everybody gets a chance to hear what? The gospel being preached. Amen. Glory to him. So, so the gospel is still going to go out. Hey, glory be to God. Amen. And, and so uh, 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 there will be, even in this day and age, there will be people uh, who will come to the feast. Amen. Go ahead. Watch this. Let me let me put a, a, another simple way. There are still folk who are going to come to church. Uh oh, oh. Say somebody got that. That part of where the invitation goes out too. <laughs> Uh, glory. When we come to church, we come to church to hear a word. We come to church because we coming to a feast. Amen. My my soul uh, is coming to feast on what? The word of God. My my soul is coming to, 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 to be married and stay married to what? Christ Jesus. Amen. So when I come to church, amen, glory, amen, I'm coming to the feast. Now watch this, amen. Tell somebody, say, everybody that comes to the feast won't be properly dressed. Mm. Uh -oh. Some are just coming because what? They 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 they've been invited but 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 they ain't really coming to accept the invitation. They coming to see what they can get. Mm. Well, somebody say it's cause cause the table has been prepared. The 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 the, 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 it, the, the feast is already ready. So yeah. so some folks are not coming uh uh, uh, how can I put this here? Uh, their heart's not in it. They just in it to see what they can get. Uh oh, oh glory, have mercy. And and so uh, there will be a time. Watch this here. There will be a time that even in the church, uh, tell somebody say the king gonna show up. Mm. Oh my God! <laughs> because we have people in church that can fool other folks. But when the king shows up, he knows whether you are dressed for the occasion or not. Oh, tell somebody, I say, it's still going on. And so the king of kings, the Lord of lords, Christ Jesus, amen, glory, have mercy. He will come and pass judgment. Uh, see, because there's no reason for the church not to be dressed. Mm. All right, now. Can, can I say that again? Oh my. There is no reason for the church not to be dressed. We already know that the king is going to come what? Sooner or later. We already know that the king is for us to what? Be ready when he comes. Amen. And, and how do we get ready? Somebody say it's in the book. How we should dress. How we should carry ourselves, how we should act, how we should behave, what we should be doing. Somebody say it's all in the book. Because when the king returns, we want to be ready. Amen. We want to be included in the feast. We want to be included in the marriage. We want to be able to be in the wedding processional amen mm -hmm. amen so it is with us amen glory and those that do not abide by the king's commandments the king's judgment the king's statutes the, the king's word amen tell somebody say they will have judgment passed upon them amen glory amen because verse 14 simply says for many are called but few or chosen. Everybody is called because everybody what is invited. But not everybody that's invited <coughs> will accept the invitation. Mm. Amen. Uh, glory be to God. Amen. 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 Glory. Have mercy. That was uh, uh, Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 through 14. And in verse uh, 15. Amen. Verse 15. Mm, 15 through 21 amen uh in verses 15 to 21 it, it, you find the pharisees trying to entangle jesus and they tried to entangle jesus simply by using somebody say the money amen glory you will find here that the herodians and and the pharisees got together amen the herodians amen what my notes and tell you what the herodians are the herodians are the party name, according to Bruce, the party name probably originated in a kind of hero worship for the uh, Herod the Great. Uh, but the definition of the Herodians is a Jewish political party 
who sympathize with the Herodian rulers in their general policy of government and in the social customs which they introduced from Rome. Amen. <laughs> and so here the Herodians is some Jewish uh, political party who got together with the Pharisees. And, and so they tried to ensnare Jesus with the question. Amen. And the question had to do in verse 17, it had to do with, with Caesar. It said, tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? They thought this would trip Jesus up because if they said, uh, um, because if they said uh, uh, it, it was lawful, to give tribute, if Jesus said it was lawful to give tribute to Caesar, then he would be denying the fact that God was a uh, uh, ruler over the Jewish people. But if he said that, uh, if he said it wasn't, then they would say, wait a minute, you are not going by the, the laws of the land. You know what I'm saying? So so they were trying to, to uh, ensnare Jesus, amen. And and so it says in 18 verse, it said, but Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, uh, this is what Jesus said to them, why tempt ye uh, me, ye hypocrites, amen. And so Jesus said, show me the tribute money. And they brought him a penny, glory be to God, amen. And when they brought him a, a penny in verse 20, it said, Jesus said this, and he said unto them, who is this image in uh, superscription on it. In other words, who they got on the who, who they got on the money? Who, who do you see? What what pictures on the money? Amen. And in verse twenty one, they say unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And in verse twenty two, it said, When they had heard these words, they marvelled and left him and went their way. Amen. Uh, in other words, they 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 they, 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 they it, it's like. Oh man, he taught us a lesson. That was a good one, man. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? We, we we thought we had him, but but his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, it surpasses anything that we've ever uh, uh, saw. Glory. Have mercy. He said, so so Bible said they left. Amen. So that was the first season of Rodian. Amen. And and so now, since the, the, the Sadducees had heard what happened to the Pharisees and the and, and the Heronians, they thought they'll take, take a crack at it. So in verse 23, it said, The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him. So here they come with their question. Amen. And, and so just to go from verse 24 to 29, because in 29, Jesus speaks. And what they actually did, they asked Jesus a question about, uh, um, uh, about marriage. But it really wasn't about marriage. It was about what they call, uh, God, what do I do with my notes? Um, it's called a, a levirant marriage. A levirant marriage was 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 um, during Moses' time that when a brother-in-law, if if his wife died and he wasn't married, the brother-in-law would marry uh, 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 the widow of his brother and raise up kids so that the brother's lineage could go on. So it was called a leverant marriage. Amen. And so in this text, when they asked Jesus about it, you know what I'm saying? They, they say in verse 25, so now there were with the seven brethren in the first, when he had a, a he, I'm sorry. Now there were with us seven brethren. And the first, when he had married a wife, deceased and had and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. It said, likewise, the, the second also and the third unto the seventh. Amen. And, 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 and last of all, the woman died also in verse 27. So in verse 28, here go the Sadducees because they didn't really, the Sadducees didn't really believe in the resurrection. You know what I'm saying? So they thought that asking this hypothetical question, yet this foolish question, would, would cross Jesus up. And so uh, it, 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 they were trying to get Jesus to, to show everybody that resurrection was a, a thing of nonsense. Amen. So so here go they question in verse number 28. They said, therefore, in the resurrection, whose life shall she be of the, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Amen. And so in twenty in the 29th verse, boy, that I'm telling you, Jesus is amazing. And listen to what Jesus says to them. He said, Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Oh, Jesus said, There's two things y'all missing here. First of all, you really don't know what the scripture means. 
You know what I'm saying? And you really don't know the power of God. Glory, have mercy. He said, for in the resurrection, verse 30, he said, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Amen. Tell somebody, Jesus said, y'all asking me in the resurrection, is it, it, who, who, she who, who, who she gonna be married to? Is it gonna be the first uh, uh, brother or is it gonna be the, the seventh brother? And Jesus Glory, heaven. Jesus ain't said it, but I'm going to say it. It's like Jesus saying, you dummies. Did you not read in the word of God that when it comes to the house of God, the kingdom of God, they're, they're not married? We're all married to God. To, we're married to the kingdom. We're not married to, to one another. So if, glory, so if she married the first brother and, and, and married the seventh brother, it won't matter in the resurrection because in heaven, somebody say, we like angels. Glory, have mercy. That's what he said in verse 30. He said, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. Tell somebody that, that we're not going to have no, no, no marriage ceremony. We, we go into the ceremony. What? Because we're married to the Lamb of God. We're married to the Word of God. We're married to the Father. Amen. And so he said, but there, he said, but in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven. And then Jesus went on in verse 31. He said, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, he said, have ye not read that, that which was spoken of you by God saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Uh oh, glory. Have mercy. Amen. <laughs> Tell somebody, say, 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 he's simply saying, when you're dead, you're dead. He said, I'm not the God of the dead. I'm the God of the living. Amen. But but in the resurrection, when you are raised and you're living unto God, he's, he said, now I'm the God of the of the living. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. I, oh, what, what I need, what I need to be the God of the dead for the dead can't do anything. They dead. Life has ceased. But he said, but I'm but of the living. He's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And when we are resurrected in Christ Jesus, tell somebody to say, we move from being dead to being alive. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And so Jesus has put their, their foolishness in its place. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. <laughs> somebody say, won't he do it? Amen. Yes, he will. Amen. And so that is how the conversation went. And the Bible says, if you read on in verse 34, it said, um, verse 33, and when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine, at Jesus' teachings. He said, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to, the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Okay, here they go now. It's all, oh, man, he, he, look, he done did a number on them, y'all. It's our turn. Yeah, yeah, they done tried it once. Amen. You know, so hey, let, 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 let's try it. Somebody said, let's try it again. Try it again. So in verse 35, it said, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, uh, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, One of the, the Pharisees, Amen. He said, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Amen. He wants to trip Jesus up, tempting Jesus with this um, question. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? In verse 37, it said, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. He said, this is the first and great commandment. Amen. You ought to tell somebody, say the first and great commandment is thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Tell somebody, say nothing comes before God. Nothing. Nothing. He said, this is the first and great commandment. Somebody said, give God your all. Amen. Let, let's, let, 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 let's not be mistaken. Amen. Uh, we have spouses. We have loved ones. We have family. We have friends. And we love them all. But neither of them shall ever come before God. Uh, look what he said. He said, thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy he said, this is the first and great commandment. 
Amen. Watch this. Glory. Amen. Jesus said, and the second is like unto it. He said, the second commandment is just like the first. You know, it, it, it's just as great. Amen. He said, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thou shalt. Because if I love my neighbor, watch this. If I love my neighbor the way I love the Lord, tell somebody, I say, we, we wouldn't have all these problems we have. If people could love people the way they love God, uh, some, some tell somebody else, I'm talking about truly love God. I ain't talking about your lip service. I'm talking about your obedience, uh, uh, how you live out the gospel in your life. If, if people could do that, glory, have mercy, amen. And then Jesus goes on. Two commandments hang all the law in the prophet. He's in other words, these two commandments bring you right back to the first and the second. Jesus. He's a matter of fact, everything that the law and the prophets taught you come back to the first and the second. If you can get the first and the second, tell somebody say everything else will fall in line. If, if you learn to love God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, if you can love God with everything you Oh, tell somebody, say, it won't be a problem doing the second command. Jesus. Yeah, glory be to God. He said, why? He said, because the Bible uh, rests upon loving God and loving your neighbor. Mm -hmm. That's what it said in verse 37, 38, 39, mm -hmm. and verse 40. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. On verse 40, and, and on these two commandments hang all the law. And the prophets. And then he goes on. He said, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them. Jesus said, okay, it's your second time coming to me. Amen. In this chapter alone. Amen. He said, but since you're here, let me ask you a question. He said, what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? Whose son is he? Uh, um, they said unto him, the son of David. He said unto them, how then does David in spirit Call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? Oh man, glory. Him. Tell somebody, I said, Jesus was giving them a, a, a glory. Amen. Giving them, uh, what, how can I say this? Amen. Glory. He was instructing them in, in righteousness. He was instructing them in the word. He he, he was showing them that uh, uh, the way they've gone about things is they're looking at it all wrong. He, he was giving them a, a rightful perspective when it came to the word of God, but he wanted them to have a right perspective where? In their heart. Because if you get a right perspective in your heart, some, tell somebody, say, you can apply that. Oh my, yes, God. Amen. He said, and no man was able, look in verse 46. He said, no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Amen. <laughs> For whatever reason it was, glory hammer said, they could not, glory hammer, tell somebody, say they, they could not uh, uh, entrap Jesus. They could not ensnare Jesus. They could not, with their foolish questions, cause Jesus to err. Somebody, tell somebody, say, that's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of master that we have. Glory, have mercy. Uh, he can't be tripped up with small things, big things, anything. Uh, he is the risen Savior, amen, and he's here for us. If you want to be able, amen, tell somebody, if you want to be kept from being dead uh, and Things that 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 people throw at you. Tell somebody, say, stay t stay in tune with the Word of God. Stay in tune with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stop trying to speak and let the Spirit of God in you speak for you. Somebody say that'll keep you from all entanglements. Right there. Amen. Well, we thank God for this twenty second chapter of Matthew. Amen. We thank. God for allowing us to see the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding of Jesus Christ and how he handled uh, 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 people, how he handled the people of that time. Amen. Uh, 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 all these people that were listening, oh, glory, let me make sure I say this. All the people that were listening weren't, weren't Pharisees and Sadducees and Herodians. Amen. Tell folks, these were also followers of Christ 
who was hungry for what he was giving. The All along our daily lives, we must remember there are some that will receive the invitation and some that will not. Amen. Uh, praise God for those that receive and praise God for those that don't. Amen. Pr pray for them. Amen. Glory that, that, that it's never too late that, that the word of God can reach them. It might not be through you, but tell somebody God's got a ram in the bush. Amen. But just be sure that you're doing what God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Once again, can we just give God a, a praise for his word? Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to his name. Amen. Glory be to his name. We thank God for his word. Amen. We thank God for the teachings of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. First lady, before we close out tonight, do you have anything for the people? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, tomorrow night, saints, is church check-in. Amen. Glory. Have mercy. Amen. Uh, tell somebody, say, there's a blessing in obedience. Amen. Amen. Church check-in tomorrow, 6.30. Amen. We won't be there long, 30 minutes at the most. Amen. <laughs> Just a, another opportunity for us to fellowship and commune and, and see one another. Amen. And just, just see how everybody's doing. Amen. That's why it's called church check-in. Amen. We want to know and see how you're doing. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Uh, is there anything, First Lady, I need to remind? I don't think so. No one is Edwards family, my cousin, um, Lester, you know, Edwards passed away, and the funeral is scheduled for Friday. Amen. We want to keep the Edwards family uh, uh, in prayer. The Edwards, the Tates, Marshalls, Marshalls and Mac McAdams. Mac Adams. Amen. Glory. I'm going to say McBride. We want to keep the families in prayer or uh, loss of a loved one. Amen. Amen. Let's Let's keep them lifted in prayer. Amen. Well, if there isn't anything else, saints, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. I pray that the word of God is truly blessed. You. Amen. I want to encourage you to, to live this word. Amen. This is a place where we teach and preach, but we want to be a church that lives the word of God each and every day of our lives. Amen. If all men hearts are clear, let us pray. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, God, for this time of fellowship and communion in the word of God. We thank you, God, that you allowed us to see God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost through the word of God by the spirit of the Lord that lives in us. I pray, God, that you will continue to open our eyes that we may see, open our ears that we may hear, God, but open our hearts that we may receive what thus said the word of God. And from there, God, go on to obedience in Christ Jesus. Now, God, as we prepare to leave from this broadcast, but never from thy presence, go with us, God. Speak in us, through us, for us, and on our behalf uh, by the Spirit, of the, by your Holy Spirit, so that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts, God, may be acceptable in your sight. Our Redeemer, our God, our all in all, our everything. We love you, God. We appreciate you, and we thank you. For it's in the precious and mighty and wonderful name of Christ, we do pray this prayer. Let the people of God say amen. Amen and amen. Well, saints, we thank you for tuning in tonight. We pray that your night will truly be blessed. We wish you a peaceful and a safe sleep in Jesus Christ. Until we meet again, as always, be thankful, be blessed, and be in God.